All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you guys going on this journey with me of uh, gaining information on the plight and the history of Black people. The journey that I'm on right now is to gain information that will, you know, enlighten me about some things that I didn't know, maybe. And uh, there's a lot that I don't know. And some of the things that I do learn, I want to share that with people so that they can know as well, because I'm one of those people who like to uh, make what I don't know what I know. And by doing that, uh, I feel that universally as a, a giver, I would be giving or sharing information with you know people that I don't know. And I feel that that's the energy that a lot of people could respect and appreciate once they you know hear it or see it. Because one of the things I like to ask people is that when you know the truth, do you still believe the lie? So if you've never been uh, introduced to the truth, your answer would probably be yes, <laughs> right? Maybe not, but you know it's always better to have the actual truth. So I'm going to start out with a segment that I did some research on this week, uh, and this in line with. Uh, a word that you guys may or may not have heard before. It's called prevalence, P-R-E-V-A-L-E-N-C-E. -E. Now, not to make it seem like you don't know anything or I don't know anything. I just like to, I wasn't familiar with that word. So I looked it up on the definition and prevalence is the proportion of a population who have a specific characteristic in a given time period. Now, how is prevalence estimated? It says to estimate prevalence, researchers randomly select a sample, smaller group from the entire population they want to describe. Using random selection methods increases the chances that the characteristics of the sample will be representative of or similar to the characteristics of the entire population. Now that makes sense to me, and I'm sure that makes sense to you. Now for a representative sample, prevalence is the number of people in the sample with the characteristics of interest divided by the total number of people in the sample. Got it? Okay, I, I know you knew that. I just want to throw that in because I didn't know it. And uh, I'm not the smartest person on the planet, never claim to be. But it says Black and African American people living below poverty are twice as likely to report serious psychological distress than those living over 2x the poverty level. It also says that adult Blacks and African Americans are more likely to have feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and worthlessness than adult whites. And finally, Blacks and African Americans are less likely than white people to die from suicide at all ages. However, Black and African American teenagers are more likely to attempt suicide than white teenagers. And that's 9.8% versus 6.1%. Now, I'm going to add this little extra segment because I wanted to share this as well. It says 16%, 4.8 million of Black and African American people reportedly having a mental illness, and 22.4% of those, which equals 1.1 million people, reported a serious mental illness over the past year. And serious mental illnesses rose among all ages of Black and African-American people between 2008 and 2018. So think about how actually not having resources will affect you know, your journey as an African-American, and it does. Now I'm gonna share a little bit about a segment called Attitudes. It says Black and African-Americans hold beliefs related to stigma, psych what is it? Psychological openness and helping and help seeking in which turn affects, which in turn affects their coping behaviors. The participants 
in this study were not very open to acknowledging the psychological problems, but they were somewhat open to seek mental health services. 30% of participants reported having a mental illness or receiving treatment for a mental illness. Black and African-American men are particularly concerned about stigma. Cohort effects, exposure to mental illness and increased knowledge of mental illness are factors that could potentially change beliefs about symptoms and mental illness. And finally, participants appear apprehensive about seeking professional help for mental health issues, which is consistent with previous research. However, participants were willing to seek out some form of help. So uh, we do want help. We do want to you know, figure out why we're like we are, right? We want to, you know, stop the things that we're having to deal with or, you know, minimize them at, at best, you know, I mean, at least. But uh, see, as, as I share this information, I'm sure you gain a different perspective because that's what I do. As, as I am able to actually hear and read this information for myself, it allows me to have a whole nother perspective on what I thought versus what I now know, right? And I know it does that with you too. And I really do appreciate you, you know, just checking in from time to time. Don't forget to share and like these videos. I appreciate that. You know how the algorithms, algorithms work. And uh, again, my name is Larry James and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.